Let's take a look at two different types of problems that you might be asked to solve that involve the concept of constant pressure or coffee cup calorimetry. Before we get started on this problem, I want to show you that I have brought over our drawing of the coffee cup calorimeter so we can fill it out with the information from the problem. I have the equation that we use for solving coffee cup calorimetry problems, and then also these relationships between the heat that is lost by the system or the heat that is lost by the reaction and the heat that is absorbed by the surroundings or the water or vice versa. So let's start by reading the problem and just kind of identifying all the different variables that we have in this problem. This is telling us that we have 0.1 moles of HI and also 0.1 moles of KOH. So that's gonna be our system in this particular reaction. We have 0.1 moles of HI and also 0.1 moles of KOH. And like I said, that will be our system or our chemical reaction. And these chemicals, the HI and the KOH, they are in a coffee cup calorimeter that is holding 250 grams of water. So also in this, we have 250 grams of water, and that 250 grams of water is our surroundings. All of the heat that is being given off by the reaction between HI and KOH will be absorbed by the water in this calorimeter. And the problem also tells us that our temperature is increasing by 15 degrees, which we would monitor with the thermometer. So we have a change in temperature. This is a change in temperature for the water or for the surroundings. It's a positive 15 degrees Celsius. We don't know where the temperature started or where the temperature ended, but it doesn't really matter. All that we really need to know here is what the change is in the temperature. And we're being asked to calculate delta H right here in units of kilojoules per mole. So we're gonna be using this equation and we wanna start just by plugging in all of the variables that we have. I'm gonna start by copying delta H of reaction is equal to negative. I'm going to leave all of these subscripts off just to kind of save time and space. Delta H of reaction is negative S M delta T. All of these are for the water. The S is the specific heat of water, which is 4.184. In the last video, I mentioned that this is a number that you'll use often. So you want to keep that value, the value of the specific heat of water. You want to keep that handy because you'll need to refer to it quite a bit. The mass of the water, which the problem tells us, is 250 grams, and then also the change in temperature for the water, which is a positive 15 degrees C. So putting all of these things together and make sure you're paying attention to the negative sign that's out front, don't lose that negative sign. When we do the math on this, we end up with negative 15, 690 joules. Our units of grams will cancel, and our units of delta or degrees Celsius cancel as well. And I'm not worrying at all about correct number of sig figs here. So what we've done here is just calculated the, the heat that is being given off by this particular reaction in joules. Um, really, we should just be putting it into kilojoules right away because we can see our desired unit is gonna be kilojoules per mole. And I'm going to go ahead and round that now to three sig figs. So we've got, negative 15.7 kilojoules being evolved by this particular reaction. When the problem is asking us to express this in units of kilojoules per mole or joules per mole, so if we have the request to put it in terms of something per mole, we want to divide by the number of moles of our limiting reactant. And in a trickier problem, you would possibly need to write out a chemical reaction between these two molecules and figure out which one is the limiting reactant. In order to make this problem a little bit simpler, I put an equal number of moles for both HI and KOH. They do react together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So the number of moles of our limiting reactant is going to just be 0 0.1 or 0 0.1, either one of them. So to wrap this up, we are going to take our kilojoules, which is negative 15.7, and we divide by the number of moles of our limiting reactant, which is gonna be 0.1 in this particular case. And this is gonna give us a result of one, negative 157 
kilojoules per mole. And like I said, in a problem that, um, a more complicated problem, you might have to go through the process of determining which one is the limiting reactant, but you already know how to do that. Let's take a, a look at another type of problem that you might be asked to solve using the concepts of coffee cup calorimetry. This one is pretty different. So this next problem that we're looking at, this does not involve a chemical reaction. I have the coffee cup calorimeter here ready for us to fill out. And the only real equation that we're going to rely on in this particular problem is the fact that all of the heat that is lost by the system is absorbed by the surroundings or vice versa. So like, let's take a look at what we have going on here. We have a 25 gram piece of metal and it's at 80 degrees Celsius and it's dropped into a coffee cup calorimeter that has 150 grams of water at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's write some of that stuff down. We've got our piece of metal. We drop that down into the calorimeter. It's right there. There's our metal. This piece of metal is 25 grams and its initial temperature, Ti, is 80 degrees Celsius. And that metal we dropped into the coffee cup calorimeter full of water. We have 150 grams of water and the water's initial temperature is 20 degrees C. Um, the problem then says the metal cools down and the water warms up until they are both at 35 degrees C. Now we can calculate S, the specific heat, and C, the heat capacity for the metal. So let's kind of, let's add in our final temperature for the water, our T final was 35 degrees C. For the metal, T final, also 35 degrees C. So they both came to the same temperature. Um, there's going to be, there's going to be quite a bit of math involved. We're going to use this equation right here. Like I said, it's going to be quite a few steps involved for determining S and C for the metal. So let's just start with this equation and we'll see, we'll see what we can do. So we have the, our system. I am going to say, and just to help us keep, keep this straight. I'm going to use M for the metal, which is our system. And the heat that is lost by our system is equal to the heat that is going to be absorbed by our surroundings, which is the water. I'm going to use a W for the water. Now, we know that the heat, that uh, the Q for our metal, whatever it might be, can be calculated using our SMAT equation. The specific heat of the metal times the mass of the metal times the temperature change for the metal. And we know the same thing is true for the water. The heat of the water can be calculated by taking the specific heat of the water, multiplying it by the mass of the water and also the temperature change of the water. In this particular scenario, we do not know the heat that is ex um, uh, exchanged by the metal. We also do not know the specific heat of the metal. That's what we're trying to figure out. We do know the mass of the metal is 25 grams, and we can figure out the temperature change for the metal as well. Let's do that down here. The temperature change for the metal is going to be the final temperature minus the initial temperature, 35 degrees, which is our final temperature, minus 80 degrees which is negative 45. So we know that the change in temperature for the metal is negative 45 degrees C, and it's gonna be really important that we keep track of that negative sign. We don't wanna lose it. Let's do the same thing for our water. For water, the specific heat is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Remember, that's a constant that you do want to keep handy. I'm totally gonna to run out of room here, so I'm gonna move all of this stuff over. The mass of the water in this scenario is 150 grams and the temperature change for the water. We want to calculate that as well. So the change in temperature for the water is going to be the final temperature of the water minus the initial temperature of the water. The final temperature is 35. The initial water temperature was 20. So this is a temperature change of positive 15. I'm just going to write 15 without the plus sign. 
So for these two equations, we know everything except for the specific heat of the metal. We also know that negative Q metal is equal to positive Q water. So we can put, we can combine these two equations together. And we can say that negative, whatever the specific heat is of the metal, times 225 grams times negative 45 degrees C. Remember, we definitely don't want to lose that negative sign in front of the 45. That is going to be equal. So all of that right there is negative QM. I put that negative sign in front. All of that is going to be equal to positive QW, 4.184 joules per gram degree C times 150 grams times 15 degrees C. And there's a lot of numbers in this equation, but this is definitely a math problem that we can solve. Um, when we work all of the math out on this, the specific heat of our metal is going to be 8.4, and the units will be joules per gram degrees C. And in terms of if you're feeling kind of intimidated by what kind of uh, math we're doing here, we're gonna just multiply all of these numbers by each other, whatever this works out to be, we're going to divide all of this by these numbers over here and then fix our negative signs. They'll work out to be positive signs. We've got a lot of really great unit canceling that's going on um, with these problems to bring our specific heat down to the correct units. Now, in terms of how we could um, get the heat capacity C for the metal, since we've got this part figured out, there's a couple of different ways that we could approach this. The simplest way that we could calculate the heat capacity for the metal is that we could recognize that the heat capacity is just simply the specific heat times the mass. If we look at the units of specific heat, if we see that if we just multiply this number by the mass of the metal, we're going to end up with the correct units for heat capacity. And that's definitely going to be the easiest way for us to solve this problem. 8.4 joules per gram degrees C, and then multiply by the mass of the metal, which is 25 grams. Our gram units are going to cancel out here and we are going to be left with 209, 209 joules per degree C. Now, if you didn't want to take this approach, if this doesn't make a ton of sense to you, then what you could do is go back up to the beginning, all the way up here, and you could write different equations. So instead of writing Q smat, you could instead use Q cat. So you could say that the heat of the metal is equal to the heat capacity of the metal times the delta T for the metal. And you could also say that the heat capacity or the heat of the water is equal to the heat capacity of the water times delta T. And then you could, just like we did up here, you could figure out what you know, you could combine the two equations together and you could solve down for the heat capacity. I personally feel like this is a much easier way to solve this. So we have come up with both of the numbers that we were asked to solve for, S and C, and there's a solution to this problem.